Hey guys, there has been something of a glut of HDR and exposure blending applications on the market of late. There are of course the traditional options, you know, things like Adobe Lightroom, which has had HDR exposure blending built in for some time, and of course Photoshop too, and you've got slightly newer kids on the block, such as Luminar Neo. And I thought it'd be nice to do a little bit of a test on a exposure bracketed shot I took down at the beach. So I decided to put various options to the test. I think I've got six in all. I've already blended them and I'm gonna show you the results. And one of these applications is, I reckon, one of the best kept secrets in exposure blending. That secret application is something I've been using for many years now. It's not a new bit of software by any stretch of the imagination, but I never see it being talked about really or referenced. And I think it's far and away the best, but you can judge for yourself because I'm gonna go through these images on my little MacBook here and you can see for yourself. Here are the three bracketed shots. So this is obviously the overexposed shot. Here is the mid-range shot, and here is the underexposed shot. So there's about a one and a half EV difference between the three shots. So this is minus one and a half EV. The middle shot is obviously uh, zero exposure uh, bracketing, and we got plus one EV for the overexposed shot to get all the detail in the subject of the shot. Those are the three bracketed shots, and I already own quite a few HDR applications which I've purchased over the years, and I downloaded trial versions of a couple of others just to put them to the, through their paces, and we'll have a look at the results now. So let's kick things off with Adobe Lightroom's HDR. Now, this is one I actually use a fair bit myself. I always test out the various options. Obviously I choose the one that's best and sometimes Lightroom does the best job. Not always by any stretch of the imagination, but sometimes. And we can see the results on the screen here. Now, I really like the way this is blended and there's a couple of things that we've got to look out for in this shot. The first thing is, is there any banding around the sun? Because that shows kind of poor blending. What's the detail looking like in the sun ray down through the sand? Has it gone all fuzzy around the edges? What sort of detail are we getting in the main subject? Has the HDR found all the information in that overexposed version and added it? And have we retained all the details in the highlights and the shadows? Because obviously that is the point of HDR. And I think Lightroom has done a pretty good job here. It's not bad at all. I don't think it's the best, but it's certainly not the worst. There's a little bit of banding evident in the sun there. And I would have preferred a bit more clarity, I think, in the main subject. But you know, it's okay. I wouldn't be upset if this was my main blend. Let's move on to the next shot. Here is the next shot, and this was processed with Adobe Photoshop using that Merge to HDR Pro option. Now, this processes it initially in 32-bit, and it's extremely powerful on some images and works really well, but I really didn't like the results I got with this particular shot, even though it pulled back some detail that none of the others did. If you look in this area here, there's information in this shot here that was not present in the Lightroom one. If we flip back, can you see this area here? So the HDR Pro has found that information and ditto down at the bottom of the sand here you can see it's all blown out. There's no light or color information in these pixels here, but the HDR Pro has found them. It hasn't done a great job blending them. Maybe that's down to my poor use of the software. I don't think it is, but it's a possibility. Um, but I'm not you know, convinced this is terribly good at all. So those are the two Adobe ones. There's Adobe Lightroom, which is far better, I think, than the HDR Pro in Adobe Photoshop. All right, next one. 
All right, here is what I think is the weakest of all the conversions, and this is on one's HDR. I downloaded the trial version. I think you get about 14 days to give it a go. I did actually consider buying uh, all the on one suite in the Black Friday sales just gone, but I already own all the Topaz ones. And from what I've seen online and in my own testing, there's not a huge benefit to me in having it alongside Topaz. So I didn't buy it. So anyway, this is the trial version of on one HDR. And I think it's done a pretty shunky job in all honesty. I will draw your attention to the banding, heavy banding around the sun. It's done a really bad job of blending the sun here. Now I chose the flat profile it on one because I wanted a kind of a smoothed out version. With all of these shots, I brought them all into Lightroom after I processed them and applied some tweaks, nothing major, just to try and make them look as similar as possible to make a comparison easier. I think it's done a nicer job possibly on the sand down here with this kind of bokeh we got here because I shot this obviously at a very, very wide open aperture. And if we go flick back quickly to the Lightroom one, past Photoshop, so here's the Lightroom one, and we can see down this area of the shot here, and then nip back quickly. It's pulled out more information there. I'm not sure it's necessarily any better, but like I say, I thought this was the weakest of my test shots. Let's move on to the next one, and that is the editor of choice, the darling of the photo editing scene at the moment, Skylum's Luminar Neo. Let's see how that did. And I have to say that this was actually my second favorite. I wasn't expecting Neo to do as well as it did. I've tested it on some HDR stuff in the past. And I don't know whether they've made some tweaks in recent updates, but I thought this was a really nice blend. You can see it's done a great job around the sun. There's not much in the way of banding there at all. It's brought out beautiful detail down in the sand here. It hasn't pulled out the information that Photoshop did here, but that's okay, I don't mind. The main subject is slightly dark, but I don't think it affects the image at all. And it's done a really nice job on the sky over here. All in all, I was really pleased with that. It was my second favorite. Here's the next one, and this is Affinity Photo version two. Yes, I paid again for Affinity Photo. I don't actually use it that often. I'm not entirely sure why I keep buying it. I use it for a couple of things, but I thought I'd try the HDR on this. And it's okay, it's not terrible. It's got some banding evident here around the sun, which lets it down quite a bit. Uh, you can see quite a dark ring around the sun where it hasn't blended it well. It's done an okay job down in the sand here. It's done a better job, I think, of the main subject than a couple of the other ones, but I'm not overwhelmed by Affinity Photo's efforts for this particular shot. So there we have Affinity Photo, Adobe Lightroom, Adobe Photoshop, Luminar Neo, On One HDR. And I said I had six and a secret uh, application, one I use all the time. And I'll show you the results from that one now. And this is the blend I did with it. And it's something called Enfuse. I use a plugin in Lightroom called LR Enfuse, which is created by an independent developer. I'll put the link to it down in the description below. And I just love the way that the Enfuse software blends bracketed images together. No matter which HDR software I use, I often find the results are quite harsh and kind of over sharpened. And the reason I love Enfuse is it just does this beautiful, beautiful job of blending everything together. I mean, look at this image. Look at the beautiful way it's uh, blended the, the sun here. Even if you look at the area down here where there's no light or color information, it's blended the edges in nicely to the sand. It's done a beautiful job down here. And check out the main subject. It's far and away the best. 
It's brought out all sorts of information and clarity in there. I haven't done anything crazy to this in Lightroom at all. I haven't cranked clarity up or anything or boosted the shadows. Just a few minor tweaks like I did to all of the images to try and make them look as similar as possible. Whenever I'm processing my photos, I always try and fuse first. The only weakness I found with this particular bit of software is that it doesn't do the auto aligning quite as well as other applications. And sometimes you find that you've got some ghosting going on in branches and stuff like that. It's not terrible by any stretch of the imagination, but it does occasionally happen. And when that happens, I use um, Lightroom HDR, which you can crank up the de-ghosting levels on that to really get that all aligned properly. So there you go, guys. That's my secret weapon, LRN Fuse. It's just such a beautiful little blending application. It blends things in a slightly different way to HDR. It's a different approach and you get much nicer results as far as I'm concerned. Much smoother, something that's better suited, I feel, to landscape photography. If you use something like uh, On One HDR or Affinity Photos HDR, I think they're fine if you've got things like structured buildings or if you're doing real estate photography and that kind of stuff. But I think for landscape photography, LR Infuse is the landscape photographer's best kept secret. And I'm happy to share that with you guys. And I hope you'll go and buy it on the link down below. It's not an affiliate link. I'm not going to kick back in any way, shape or form. I paid for the software with my own hard earned cash, but I just wish the developer well because it's great and I want to see great software like this supported. All right, guys, that will do us for this little HDR exposure blending roundup, which was your favorite of the shots on the screen. I might put them in a little gallery sequence after I shut up in a minute so you can have another look and maybe watch it in 4K and pause the video to really have a look at the differences between the shots because there is a huge difference. And I think you can improve your photography, your exposure blending greatly just by using the right tool for the right job. If you enjoyed the vid, please give us a like and consider subscribing for more generalized photography bollocks from me talking about software like this that interests us photographers. Till the next time guys, ta-ta.